Hi uh, guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a trip down memory lane. And we're going to go back to basics, back to the Game Boy style movements, which are grid movements. Now currently I've got two scripts set up, and I'll just give you a quick example of what we'll be dealing with here. So the first one is something I'm going to call free movement, and that is the ability to move in all directions freely. So if I go ahead and remove that and put in my grid movement script, we'll see what our target movement style is actually going to be. So now if I just press one of the arrow keys once, we see that we snap within a grid. And I can hold it, we'll continuously move just like before, but when we let go we'll always be confined to this grid. Now this is an extremely easy thing to do, but it's a thing that I don't often see in modern games. Now don't get me wrong, the free movement is perfectly fine, perfectly valid, but to me, if you're making a pixel art game, more than anything, I like to see this confined to a grid movement style. My personal preference, don't know about you, so you can drop a comment below and let me know which kind of movement you prefer, free movement or grid movement. But this video, we're actually going to be focusing on the grid movement, as you may have guessed by the video title. And if you've clicked on it, I assume you're interested in grid movement as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove that grid and delete it from the project. We're going to create that from scratch. So the basic movement script is something that you may already have in your game. As you can see, really basic, we're using the old school input methods. We've got WASD, and all that's going to do is move our player up, down, left and right using the move player method. And that's how we get our free movement. So we're going to create a new script, we're going to copy the majority of this, but then we're going to tailor it to limit our player movement to that grid. But before we do that, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got links down in the description. Go check him out on Twitter and on his website and keep up to date with the latest game that he's got in development. And I'd just like to thank all my patrons. You guys are fantastic. Okay, so let's get into it then. So we'll go ahead and create a new c -sharp script. And we'll call that Grid Movement. Open it up in Visual Studio. And like I said before, we'll just take this input and drop it in here for now. And we'll remove that start method. So the first thing that we're going to want to do, we're going to want to set up a few variables. The first of which is going to be a boolean, so we can keep track of whether or not our player is already moving. So we'll call that is moving. We also need to keep track of our original position and our target position. Now, we'll use these in just a minute, but we just need two vector 3s to keep track of these two positions. That's private vector 3, org pos, original position, and target pos. And one final field that we need, instead of a movement speed for this, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to keep track of the time we want it to take for the player to move from one grid square to the next. So that's a private float, we'll call that time to move, and I'm going to set this to 0.2. So this is in seconds, so that's going to take one fifth of a second to move our player from point A to point B. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that if we're already moving, we don't actually start another movement because that'll mess up our grid. So inside of each of these if statements, I'm going to check and make sure that the player isn't already moving. If the player is moving, we're not going to start another movement. Next, we'll create a core routine to actually take charge of our movement. So that'll be a private i enumerator, and we'll call that move player. And this is going to take in a vector 3, just like before, and that is going to be our direction. So inside here, we want to make sure that we set our is moving boolean to true and false when it's relevant. So right at the start of the core routine, we're going to set is moving equal to true, and then right at the end, we're going to set it back to false. So that way, if this core routine is already running and we press another key, it won't start moving in another direction. It'll wait for this to finish, and then if your key is still pressed, it'll move in that next direction. 
Next, we want to make sure that we keep track of the elapsed time, how much time has actually elapsed since we started this core routine. So we'll create a float inside here, and we'll call that elapsed time. And we're going to set it to zero every time we come in here. So we'll just default that to zero right there. Next, we need to set our positions. So we'll set our original position equal to whatever our transform.position currently is. And then our target position is going to be our original position plus the direction that we pass in. Now we can do a plus on this because we're doing a mathematical formula or mathematical equation, whatever you want to call it. We're doing addition on two vector threes, which is perfectly valid. So now that we have our positions, we can actually start our movement. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to use something called lerp. Now what lerp is, it takes in two values. In our case, it's going to take in two vector threes, and then it takes in a third parameter, which is known as the step. And the step is going to be the elapsed time divided by the amount of time we want it to take to move. So what that's going to make sure is, it's going to make sure that we lerp from the original position to the target position in the exact time that we want it to take. So how do we do that? Well, we can start with a while statement. And we want to make sure that our uh, elapsed time is less than our uh, time to move. So that means we're still within our movement range. Next, we'll set the player's transform dot position equal to vector three dot lerp. We want to start at our original position. We want to end at our target position. And then we want our step to be, like I said before, elapsed time divided by our time to move. So that'll start our movement going. Then we need to make sure that elapsed time actually increments. So we'll add time.delta time to that to keep it moving in real time. And then because it's a core routine, we need a yield statement. So we'll just yield return null there. And that would actually work perfectly fine. But what I like to do at the end of the movement core routine, you can sometimes get a little bit of um, a little bit of an offset. And what I mean by that is, if your original position is zero zero zero, your target position is one zero zero. As it's moving, if this elapsed time doesn't give it enough time to complete that full movement, you may be 0 0.01 of a unit out. And that may not sound like much, but if you move 100 times, 100 squares, then you're exactly one unit out of sync. So to rectify that, what we can do, after we've done our movement, we can make sure that our player is at the target position, just as simple as setting the transform.position equal to the target position. So we always know that at the end of our movement, we're going to be exactly on top of our target position. And then we just need to go up here and change these move player methods into core routines. So we'll do start core routine. And I'm just going to copy that and move these. And if we save that, that should be everything that we need. So we can come back over to our player and attach our grid movement script. And we see we have perfect grid movements. We can press it once and we snap to grid. We can hold our keys. We'll get continuous movement always constrained to this grid. So it's just as simple as that. I really hope you've learned something, guys. I really hope you start putting this kind of movement into your games. It's a really good throwback to retro Game Boy eras. And it really pleases nerds like me. <laughs> so that's all I've got for you. I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bites as Unity hints and tips.